Hi guys, I want to show you something that is really, really valuable. I want to start with thanking Sue for letting me use her post. This is something you, every one of you have um, experienced in my marketing, right? Uh, just some time ago when I uh, took a post that of all people Sue inspired me to create and then I created a series of eight posts out of that. Now I am using that as a uh, lead magnet on my website, right? And they're still all posts. So I want to talk about the strategy. And in fact, when I was doing it, I kept saying, guys, I'm going to explain the strategy. I am doing something right now. And this is a very good example. So I can show you, um, you know, what I've been doing. And I can uh, comment, you know, uh, as as I go so you can see what's possible. So this is a type of post or in the kind of article world, we call it listicles. It's when we list things. So 10 things I wish I knew when I was younger. By the way, this is a brilliant approach to you to think about, okay, what can I post about my type of offer? What can I post about my uh, area of expertise? Especially if you are unclear yourself a little bit, it's a little bit too vague and you know what, don't feel bad because we live in a constant battle for clarity, right? We have, we get clear, then again, there's a little bit of a confusion and fog. So this is really brilliant because if you ask yourself, what are the 10 things that I wish I knew when I was younger, what now I am teaching others, right? And you list those things. Those are all amazing um like a series, it could be a series, it could be, you know, all your uh, um, content around your offer, you know, and, and just so many things, like so many things you can, you can do. So sometimes, and don't forget that online, it's not enough to talk about something just one time. It's just never enough. If you spoke about one topic, for example, like even I'm going to take it from the top, you know, um, Sue is here saying how I eat has a direct impact on how well I feel in my body, right? So if she creates a post on this topic, a full post, right? And just leaves it at that. Well, that's not enough. So this topic needs to be used in your marketing over and over and over and over again. So every three, four weeks, every five weeks, well, see here, we have 10 points. That means every 10 weeks, you can still go back to number one, right? And remember again, when you're creating content that not every day you need to produce a big long fat post. Sometimes you can go live and just talk about something. It doesn't have to be structured because lives are not for being structured. Lives are just for our vibe. And sorry, I'm not on screen right now because well, actually I do have makeup. Should I go on screen? Oh, I don't know. No, oh, I don't know. I thought I'm going to reuse this. But sure, if you're watching this on a replay and you joined the group way after that, you already know Juliet has her quirks. And so sometimes, uh, sometimes that's what we're going to do. It's okay. Do I have sh show picture in picture? Hey, here I am. Ooh, that's a very strange thing. There's something really wrong about it. Okay, well, then I'm going to go off camera. Anyway, <laughs> and so let's go back to the strategy. So you have the 10 things, right? I think that if you understand, if you already picked up on my excitement that this is so much that you can talk about. And in fact, this is something that you can talk about and then talk about it again and then talk about it again. Because the more you repeat... Con, uh, information around the main points that your offer is is uh, rooted in or based on, the more clear your audience becomes. And, uh, you know, one day somebody reads about that the food has direct impact on how they feel and it didn't click. And the other day and the other time you write about it, even if you're repeating yourself, even for you, you might feel like you're a broken record, right? But for another time, that same person, just had this experience and it became a pain point for them. They're feeling sick because they had a pizza and you are explaining how you, every time you crave a pizza and you have a pizza and the next day you wake up all bloated and your face is swollen. That's what happens to me. So this is how the, at that time that, that becomes a pain point and the person can respond to it. So this is brilliant. Sue's question uh, that inspired me to create this video was, 
should what should she write she she said you know that she promised in the post there um just saying i'm planning to write a bit more and then she said oh i don't feel like it's necessary and really you don't have to do anything that doesn't excite you but i'm telling you because this really uh, happens you can't always rely on so here's the thing you can't you have to write about things that you're passionate about and you need to be passionate about what you're doing otherwise you're wasting your time if you're not passionate about your business really truly passionate it it will be very difficult to promote yourself this sort of way or even you know make this business successful the coaching business i see very clearly that if you're not yourself excited about what you're doing um you can't expect others to sign up with you because we are energy creatures and we pick up on each other's vibes, right? So that's very, very important. If we are internally hoping, like repelling this and don't want to do this, and then we, we get zero results with our posts, it's not the posts, it's not the strategy, it's how you feel, right? I see that all the time. It doesn't matter how well I write. If I am feeling inside that I don't want to sell and I'm trying to promote in my offers, you know, I don't get any clients. It's only when I am writing from a different side and I'm not internally, you know, resisting something or hoping that maybe a new client doesn't come in because, you know, they can come in with a bunch of their own problems and things like that. And I don't want to deal with them. Whatever the reasoning is, uh, it's all about the energy. So when you have a post like this, this is absolutely brilliant. Now, Sue, you don't have to see this is where uh, we can get overwhelmed is when we are trying to think about this whole thing, the commitment to this whole thing. Uh, on as a whole you know so it feels like so overwhelming now I have to write 10 long posts and and go you know deep into that so one if you imagine the step ladder one step at a time is all you need to do so print out this post and then create the post when you feel excited create a post from not even necessarily in the same order from one of these topics because this is going to prompt you to tell your story and then when you're creating this post so for example how i eat has a direct impact on how well i feel in my body so tell us a story how did you find this out what are the signs in you that uh, you don't feel well what do you eat and how do you feel after that like for example i said if i eat pizza or bread you know my face swells so i have this correlation and this is what we need to give people the the hands-on uh, comparisons our own story um and and you sue for you especially your one three profile uh, on your human design this like myself so this is something that you need to show share your personal perspectives and your personal stories because that's through your own world you're serving the rest through your own perspective you're serving the rest so that's very very important um so here's so this is what I suggest you do and this is what I myself did that so Sue inspired me to write a post about organic marketing which I did and then I went into and I posted it on Facebook now what I didn't do in my preparation actually is I didn't actually um, show you the post the original post that I made so which is not too far long ago so I can find it and you can see these are so these are the all the posts that then I followed up and I did write them only you know one at a time in fact when I wrote the very first post it, there was even different picture here let me just open it uh, in its own um, okay so this was the very first post that I wrote right and Sue said she's exhausted her profile for marketing. And I was thinking, no, because this is impossible. And But, it, but it's fair to feel like this. So we, I, I wrote all this and I said, okay, so I'm going to go into breaking down. I kind of did what Sue did, right? And I didn't have a single thing um, written when I made that promise. And I'm also someone who I can make promises, you know, and I've already let go long time ago of trying to commit to every promise I make because I don't have a defined will center that allows us all to follow through and to whatever I, is important to me I'm going to follow through right so this is what I did <coughs> and then um, the next I think I didn't even do it the next day I did it in a couple of days I created then the second post when I created the second post, that's when I thought, you know what, let's be strategic about it. I'm now breaking down something that had, if I open this, the original post, that kind of 
gave an overview and had stages. It wasn't a listicle like I didn't put numbers one, two, three, four, but really it was all like there was more or less things listed what needs to happen, right? So then I went into each one of those lists. So this is one of the first posts. And then I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to turn it into a series. So I went in and created these little graphics that I then just changed the picture that I had and, you know, and the number of what part. I created then a post, I think on day three, I created a separate post with the links. So, and I pinned it on my profile and I kept writing. When I was on part five, uh, that's when I decided to take it a step further. And I created this opt-in here, which literally says to me that originally published as Facebook series, links to each part, each part and some goodies, which I'm promoting my masterclass, um, will be delivered right into your inbox every day. You won't believe how many people are signing up for this. That's eight day and plus a little bit of an upsell um, um, email sequence, right? And I don't have to write those emails. My emails were very short and I just said, okay, so today I'm going to talk about the audience. Here's the link to the post. And I was bringing people back into Facebook because I want people to follow me on Facebook. They can find me wherever they find me, but I want them to um, follow me on Facebook so I can build relationships. So even if they don't, even if they stalk me, they're going to still click on some things, you know, just maybe some pictures, click on see more if I have a long post and read that and Facebook will count all that as um, engagement, right? So it will keep showing them my posts. Now, if you, I don't know about the groups because I don't run a group right at the moment, the free group. And I do know that the reach, you know, it shows how many people saw uh, the group. If the group is not very engaged, then Facebook starts reducing the uh, visibility of your post, so showing it to less people. Uh, it also can be that, that people are just not on Facebook when you're posting, and so they, when they get on Facebook, your post that you posted then is already drowned in the newsfeed. So just relying on Facebook newsfeed for the, for example, if you have a group is not great. If you have a group, you need to start using email marketing where you're actually sending them an email as well, telling them about something exciting you did in the group and bringing them, them there and also in, enticing them to comment, you know, whether leaving you gifts or, you know, um, have these kind of funny posts. Uh, what are you doing? Show me a picture, third picture on your phone. Uh, phone, you know, um, something like that, just so they comment. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to always be about business or serious, right? But just because they comment, you can boost the engagement on your group. Now, deviation, right? Let's go back. So this is how I started doing it. And because I was five days ahead, I kept posting the posts. I remember that I think it was the final I already created my opt-in. So whoever opted in will opt in into day one. And I will have these four days to finish off and then uh, give them the link to my social media by design uh, masterclass, right? And so now this turned into, not only it turned into a good series and it has also this um, freebie now that anyone who finds me can sign up and it doesn't matter that this was now it was 2021 now uh, when i wrote all this they, this information is uh, evergreen so it doesn't matter and my master class here is also evergreen so that's how i leveraged and that's how i um i continue using this post so going back to sue's post there is nobody says that she can't do exactly the same thing the only thing that i would change um, and you don't have to go and do the, the exactly like I created it. I'm just giving you ideas, right? How you can leverage. You can create 10 blog posts and post them on your website. So your website will look like it's padded with value, but you can use the same language, the same wording and make them into Facebook posts, long Facebook posts. The only thing is that on Facebook, you will use emojis and you will break the paragraphs a little bit, but in the blog article, you don't use emojis and you make the paragraphs normal size, you know, three sentences or four sentences. Um, but on, on Facebook, because we're looking at screens often on our mobiles, we have to understand that too much text in one block is very difficult to read. So we need to break that down. Uh, the only thing as well, when emojis are at the end of the uh, sentences, they are kind of placed randomly and it's very difficult on your eyes. So if you want to put emojis, emojis, put them after the number here because then it's visually becomes... 
uh, more pleasing for the eye and less interruption. You kind of, you, you logically, because it's a logical thing, logically you know that if there's emoji, that means a new thing is starting. Whereas here it's very distracting, it's hard to read. Um, so what else do, shall I say about this? Yeah, so when you take each one of those posts, it doesn't have to be really, really long. I know I write very long posts, but you need to add your own scenarios and examples from your own life. That's how we create the connection with the no like and trust. The like and trust is really all about them resonating with you. And those who don't resonate with you don't matter. This is something like a huge, huge mindset you need for organic marketing is that you only aim what you're writing for those people who need it, not for all people. And then you're wondering who needs this? No, they will make themselves known, right? But th those are people who we are posting for. And it's honestly a constant battle in your mind to focus on that uh, and let go of expectations of what will others think. But you know what? In life, if you focus on what others think all the time, you're never going to have a life. You're never going to be happy. You will never achieve your dreams. So it just applies here the same way. So that's just an idea of how you can take that. So I would have all this as 10 articles. You can write them over 10 weeks, right? It doesn't have to be done in one day. You can take it in bite-side pieces. Uh, 10 topics for you to keep covering. Every week you can cover one, one topic, right? And then it doesn't have to be every week you can talk about one topic. And so you can r create a small article. Then you, uh, not article, small post, for example, like this size kind of post on that one topic. Tell a story, put a picture. Uh, then you can just create a little quote, Maybe when you read it back, there would, there would be something and it just sounds really good as a saying, put in a quote, you can be quoted, right? Um, so that's another post. Then the third post could be something else like a recipe rela related to something like, you know, here's if you're feeling bad with cheese, here's an alternative. You know, you guys do that anyway. So that's how we can leverage that blog on if you're a wellness coach having a blog that talks about all these things is wonderful for those who binge for those who binge on your content it's easier to go to somebody's blog and just keep reading their blog articles than coming to their facebook page and keep reading uh, facebook's too much distraction on facebook right so we build relationships and all that but for binging we need to have the hub where they go and binge on our content um, and they do and they do i just recently had this lady who saw me on a summit talking and she reached out later on. And she says, I have been for three days binging. I've watched every video you've ever produced. And I was like, oh my God, I just pivoted. And I read every post on your, on your profile, on your page. And, you know, she was so impressed. So people who care, they, they, react, they respond, they react, they reacted. So that's something that I wanted to show you today and give you some ideas on. And don't be put off by the technical stuff. You can... Make it all very simple, right? Um, if you are not sending people emails, then you don't need to create a, a series that you send people emails. You don't have to do this, right? Or you can if you're using anything simple like MailChimp or something because you don't need to have a website in order for you to do that, to create a landing page with, um, you know, an opt-in, for example. Or even just have a post like this that comes out ever so often. Remember that series I wrote? Here is something if you want to, you know, spend some time really diving into this topic. No problem. If you put one link, you know, and yes, when we put links in the posts, um, in the news feed, this these posts are affected. But my idea when I was writing this post wasn't to put it in the news feed and, you know, some new people see it when they scroll. I would mention this post, but that would be either pinned somewhere or if somebody asked me, I can just, you know, I can send them this link and said, hey, this is, you know, this is the serious. So this is what you can do without opting in. Somebody talks about, you know, somebody shows any interest and you say, you know, I have a lot of things that you can kind of go and, and dive into reading if you want in your spare time. Here's a post to the collection of other posts that I wrote about it. There, they don't need to give you an email. So this is really, really intelligent way of, if I may say so myself, of building this library of consumption because the right people, our leads, they do a lot of consumption before they sign up. And I hope that that was helpful. Let me know what you thought.